Hey everyone, the Lightweight here, and I have another Reach video for you. And just before we begin here, um, this is a team snipers game, and I am not the best sniper in Reach yet. I'm getting better at it, I'm learning just like you guys are. But what this whole video is about that I want to show you is mainly about flanking. Now, because I don't think I'm the best sniper in the game ever, you know, I'm not the greatest, I still manage to do fairly well with my team because I flank. And I flank almost constantly throughout this entire game. And I want to show you how I do that and how you could probably improve your game by learning how to flank as well. Now, we start out the game here. And I notice that this guy <laughs> is uh, just crapping on my team from the far distance. But this uh, guy in the corner had no idea what was going on. So I choose to engage with him. Now, notice that he did drop down with me. And he has one shot on him. I have the advantage here. He did run to the left. And you'll notice that also when I no-scope him and then beat him down, that's really effective and it works. Something that you Halo 2 veterans are probably going to know really well. And you'll notice also that I crouch before I did it. Which also kind of just helps me slow things down a little bit, lets me get my bearings and get a good shot off. So every time that I go up on top sniper there and look down, I'm always doing that. I always want to make sure that my, that it, my landing site is clear. I don't want a guy just sitting there coming up the lift right to assassinate me or something. Now you also notice that because my team is all located over on this lift side, uh, sorry, not lift side, shotgun side in Reach, um, Halo 2 it was called Overshield side, but I won't get into that because this is a completely different game. Anyway, you'll notice that my team was all on Overshield side. Damn it. You'll notice that my team was on shotgun side, and I will get that down, I promise. So... I naturally assume that my uh, the opposing team was going to rush them because people like to rush in reach for some reason. You know, whatever. That's fine. Um, you're probably not going to get much better doing that kind of thing. But that's just my opinion. Take it as you will. So notice that I am low health and if you actually listen to the audio, there was a guy getting assassinated behind me and I felt kind of bad. I couldn't do anything about it, but he did get taken out in the process and that's okay. But you'll notice that um, since my team is all on shotgun side, I'm assuming that the opposing team is going to spawn on lift shot, lift side. And I actually made the right prediction here, and I actually pick up a headshot, and I get an assist. So it worked out really well. That's an example of how to flank right there. They kept pushing up, and that was their downfall, because I got behind them that way. Alright, I just saw two guys run past me, which means that they are spawning on this side, and I pick up a easy kill because I got it know where I was coming from and then I get the triple kill all because I flanked and it's really hard to explain at least for me how to actually think about this mental process of flanking but hopefully I'm doing an okay job and if you guys want more tips on how to flank more videos and flanking I'll definitely continue to bring you those kind of videos alright so notice I'm also not going for a headshot every time I see somebody I'm only going for that body shot especially since if there's teammates around they can easily clean up, clean up that kill for me because there's no such thing as kill stealing in team games there's no such thing don't get pissed off if someone takes your kills and if someone apologizes for stealing a kill you know say that's fine don't worry about it because it really doesn't matter as what matters is that score on the bottom right as long as that numbers going up that's fine because uh, I play with quite a few different people, and they all, you know, some people apologize for stealing my kills, and I just don't care. You know, I'm in this to win, and I think that's what the the mentality that many people should have is that you know you didn't steal my kill, you gave a kill to the team. And another thing I want to go over is nade avoidance. Um, I will go over this in much more detail in later videos. So if you're interested in nade avoidance kind of videos, I will definitely do more of those. Um, you'll, I'll show you something at the end that I want you guys to pay attention to. And here's another example. From a previous video of mine, I talked about um, picking up health packs and making sure that you don't waste one by picking it up when you don't actually need it. So you'll notice that right before this little fight happened, um, I did not pick up that health pack because I knew that my health was going to recharge. And luckily, now that I didn't pick it up, it's there for me to pick up when I actually need it. And I get my full health back, meaning I'm a better advantage for my team. I'm more of a team player right now. Now, we go up in a little no-scope fight, and he throws a nade, and he actually pummels me to death. And that's okay, you know, I failed there, I died. This is actually a very average game for me in terms of uh, how to play with the team. 
And that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to show you guys uh, more of my average games and just how to play in general. Now, I've noticed I picked up that kill and got an assist because I had my buddy Neil here with me. I no scoped him watching. He got the beatdown. Great teamwork there. <laughs> now, bad teamwork was that I actually no scoped in there. But bam, I get the assassination. Die. Now, I don't recommend doing that too often because it leaves you very vulnerable. So, in almost all situations, you're going to want to just go for the regular assassination. A uh, simple beat down to the back and they're dead. Now, here, you'll notice that I saw that guy jump down after he killed me. And, in my mind, he doesn't have enough time to come back up that lift and get all the way back to top sniper, which means he's still down there. Now, if you pay really close attention, you can actually see that there's two people down there. So, what I'm thinking is, he thinks that I have the high ground, he doesn't want to come up, he doesn't want to... And I'll pause this here in a second to explain it. He doesn't want to engage me. He knows that I have the upper hand, so he's going to try and want to flank me. So I counterflank him by going all the way back around to the bottom side, and I catch him off guard. And I pick up the easy kill. So that's the kind of way that you want to think. Like, what is this guy thinking? Put your mind into what you think the enemy would be thinking. What's the other player thinking? What's he doing? Now, I don't know what this guy was doing, but he completely missed me. <laughs> and he ends up dropping down. So I say, yeah, that's fine. You go do that. And I'm going to leave. I send off my hologram to cause a distraction, and he actually does think, and he comes around the bottom side. Now, I do hit that hologram, and I kind of screw up, but that's fine. You know, it happens to the best of us. Now, notice how there was a nade directly in front of me. I stopped moving completely and just stood there. It only took my shields down by a very small percent, and it, you know, paid off and got me the kill. I didn't die as quick. Now, all that matters is, like I said, is that team score. We're up 37 to 28. That's not bad. So let's see here. You notice that my teammate, Steve, he ran up there and he got killed pretty quick. So I decided, you know, time for me to push. Maybe he got a shot in. Turns out he didn't and I got owned. That's okay. You know, that's fine. It's not always going to work out in your favor. All right, so here is an important teaching lesson as well. That hologram, that blue hologram, was facing the direction of someone running up the ramp. Now holograms only stay up for a certain amount of time, which means in my brain that there is someone very close and I should, you know, be ready for someone to pop out. And that's exactly what happened. Now you'll notice that I did get betrayed there and, you know, that doesn't matter. That's going to happen in team games. Um, you're not always going to be perfect. Alright, so now I'm thinking there was a, at least two guys on that left side and they will come out to sniper side and it did work out really well because I almost got the headshot on the guy. So now I threw a nade, which is going to keep him on this side. And there he is. Or at least one of his teammates. You know, you sometimes you can't tell. So that leads me to believe that there's at least one or two guys up here. And here's one right here. And I get the easy headshot. Yay! I love that thing. And then, you know, I didn't know he was there, but I was expecting it because I did zoom in. So now I know that since my team is located over on lift side, that there is somebody camping on this uh, this other side, this lift side, and he's just sitting there waiting for people to run out. Now, I threw a nade, not thinking that I would get a kill, but I was thinking that it would cause more of a distraction for my team to be able to push up or even get a kill on him. Now, here's a good example of me flanking again. I'm not going with my team. I'm trying to circle all the way around through these blue team guys and catch them off guard. And I did that. I did that. Uh, I did just that, and I ended up picking up three easy kills. So that's the kind of mentality you want to have. I did say this before, but you want to put your own thought process into what you think the enemy is thinking at that time. Now, there's another example of nade avoidance as well. I immediately knew when that nade was going to come out of his hand, and I started jumping before it even hit the ground. So my shields didn't take much damage. Now, here's yet another example of flanking. I knew that they kept on spawning on this side, and I ended up getting uh, at least one shot on him. And as soon as I whip out this pistol, I'm screaming, Game over! Game over! And it's over. I ended up with 21 kills, and I'm not the greatest sniper. So that kind of shows you guys how important flanking is. Now what I'm doing right here is I'm showing you this whole circumference of how big this grenade uh, explosion is. Now in terms of Halo, this is really not that extravagant as many people think, which is why I want you to check out a video in the description by Tanner the Gamer. 
Uh, he's got a very good explanation of grenades and how to use them. I'll be doing I'll be doing something very similar. So just keep tuned for that. So check out the link in the description. I'd appreciate it, and so would Tanner. Thanks for watching, guys.